Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to add fog using the new dehaze option in Lightroom and Photoshop. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris and the sunny city of Los Angeles. And I make one tutorial per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode and also all the past episodes and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I want to show you how to use the new dehaze option that exists in Lightroom and Photoshop with the 2015 version to add or take out age in a photo. That's the before photo and that's the final result. Let me show you how I do this. Before we start, if you want to get a copy of the raw file that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, if you want to try this at home, you have to go to my website, photosearch.com, and here you have an arrow saying sign up and get my free goodies. All you have to do is click here and sign up, putting your name, last name, email, and password. You're going to get an email. You have to validate that email. Oh, sorry about that. And then uh, you have to log in. So put in your email. All right, so I'm logged in. Once you're logged in, you see this little cloud here with a little arrow, you click on it. And once you click on it, you have access to all the courses you bought. But if you go to uh, subscriber goodies, if you didn't buy anything, you only want to get this for free, you have access to 200 tutorials from me with the downloads of all the raw files, Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, uh, free textures, uh, based on what I'm teaching in each episode. So all this is for free. All you have to do is create a free account. Just wanted to make sure it's clear. Let's jump over to Lightroom for today's tutorial. So Lightroom CC 2015 came out with a new slider called the DA slider. It's actually pretty cool. At first I thought it was, uh, you know, kind of useless and I was not going to use it, but it actually turns out to be pretty cool. Uh, the where it's located is in the effect panel. And you can see here it's called DAs. And it's pretty straightforward. This is a photo that I took from a plane. And when you take plane shots, you know, you, you get a lot of uh, haze. Of course, you know, if I do my classic workflow of opening up the shadows, bringing down the highlights, and doing bring down the blacks and the whites, I, I am going to take care of some of the haze, but it's still, you know, there's still a lot of haze going on. So if you go to the effect panel and you just bring in this to the right, uh, look at this. It's a, quite a difference. So that's, that's pretty cool. If you go the other way, you can actually add A's or take out A's. Now, the only thing that I regret is they should have put this into, uh, you know, the gradient tool, the brush. You could brush in some A's, you know, to add fog to a photo, has A's to a photo. Because if you had phase, sorry, if you add A's everywhere, uh, you're not making any, you know, depths into a photo. Uh, let me show you what I mean. I, I shot this photo uh, in New York under a, a lot of rain. It was raining a lot. This is a view of Brooklyn from Manhattan. And as, if you can see here, I think on the boat, you can see some of the uh, raindrops. Uh, yeah, you can see it a little bit. You'll see if you download the, the DNG file. So, and what I want to do is I want to, to use the haze, but I only want the haze to be on Brooklyn to give depth to my photo. So how can we do this in Lightroom? Well, it's not possible. So we're going to have to, until they update the software and add it in the gradient, we're going to have to play around with Photoshop. And I want to show you how. First thing first, uh, I have this rule that when you have boring colors, I go black and white. So on this one, I'm going to go to the basic panel and I'm going to go, I'm just going to take out the photo, the colors, because they are not awesome colors. Then I'm going to open up the shadows bring down my highlights and then I'm going to hold on the alt key and do my black point making sure I really have the boat as a black point and I'm going to make my white point uh, making sure I have some kind of white point oh my god I have to go yeah something like this okay now the problem is that uh, you know now Brooklyn is even more visible and it's it's an okay photo but it could be nicer if there was more depth to it I usually, when I do the plus 100, the minus 100 now, and that's something I added recently, I usually put like a minus 15 clarity because when you do the plus 100 and the minus 100 on a photo, uh, it gives a little illustrative look, a little HDR look that I like to take out with the clarity slider and minus. Okay, now I got that. That's my basic thing. Now let's have the A's and just let put it over Brooklyn. So I'm going to right click, edit, and that's the key. Open as a smart object in Photoshop. 
by opening up as a smart object in Photoshop, I will be able to do what we call a, dub, a double development. And it's very easy and you can use this to add fog like I'm doing today, but you can use this to, you know, for many things, for many effects. You will see how that works. So here is my um, layers. I'm going to now make sure you don't take your layer and you dr uh, drag and drop it here on on making a new layer. That's not the way to do it with smart objects. With smart object, you got to right click and you got to do new smart object via copy. The reason is, so anything I'm going to modify here on that smart object is not going to influence this. If I had copied by pressing Command J or drag and dropping here, uh, anything that I would do on that smart object would in also influence this one. So now all I have to do is double click on it. It's going to open up the new camera row 9.1, which comes out with a new Lightroom CC 2015. And I'm going to the effect tab and here we have the DAs, uh, same thing than Lightroom except here it's tab and Lightroom is panels. And on this one, I'm going to go a minus haze and I'm only looking here at the top because I'm only trying to put Brooklyn in the haze, but a strong haze because that's really how it was, you know. Uh, okay, so now I've got one layer where there's a lot of haze and another layer which does not. So now all I need to do is I need to add a mask to blend this both exposure. So I'm going to click here on adding a mask and now that's the trick. Trick is make sure black is your foreground color. Press D on your keyboard and X if it's not the case. So black is set as your foreground color. D is a default color and X is going to make one color going from the other. So you want black as a foreground color. Okay, then you want to take the gradient tool, which is here. Make sure you click here and you want the second one. You want black to transparent, okay? Once you got black to transparent, make sure you got the first gradient, which is a linear gradient. And then you just click at the bottom of the photo. And uh, you can hold on the shift key if you want to make it very straight. And I'm going to put it right above the boat, okay? Now, what that's going to do is that it's going to create a gradient here. And, you know, white reveals black conceals. So uh, let me press the Alt key. If I press the Alt key and click on the mask, you can see what the mask looks like. So there is anything which is black or gray is going to disappear. So it's taking the haze out. Now, it didn't do so uh, enough job. I want to go a little higher up. So let's do this again. And let's go a little bit higher, maybe up to the, that bridge. That's still pretty cool, but it's, uh, the, uh, you know, that, that boat is still too much in, ha in the haze. Now, once you got the gradient in place, a shield trick that I learned from a friend, which I think is really cool, is that once you are on a mask, if you press Control L uh, on your keyboard, or sorry, Command L on your keyboard, Control L is for Windows, Command L is for Mac, you have the level tabs. And the level here, we are doing it on the mask. Remember, so... And look at the mask. If I go here, if I take that middle slider and I go right, you see how the mask becomes a lot more black. And if I do the reverse, I go here, the mask is more white. So by changing this, I'm changing my gradient and I'm making more or less of, an, of the haze. So I wanted something like this so it's not over the, so much over the boat. That's kind of perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. You can also, you know, just take a brush here, make sure uh, your brush is at 100% or maybe not like 50%. It could be cool, you know. Make sure it's pretty big and just, you know, brush over the boat just to make sure the boat, I really want the boat to stand out. Okay, and check it out before, after. Now, Brooklyn is completely in the haze now. Thanks to that new haze slider. If you think it's too much, you can lower the opacity. But I actually like it. I'm going to leave it this way. And um, I'm going to go to File, Close. And I'm sure that... Uh, the Adobe team is going to include that haze thing in the gradient filter, in which case we wouldn't have to do that. But it's a workaround. So uh, Photoshop is going to save the photo. It's going to re-import into Lightroom. Okay, there we go. It's into Lightroom. So, And uh, I think the only thing I would do on this one is I think I would do a double development. I would just bring in the white to make it to make the, the top part even more brighter. And um, I think I would just add a little gradient filter here. Uh, make sure the filter is on exposure and lower the exposure so that we have a little nice vignette effect but just at the bottom I don't want a vignette effect at the top I like the idea of the top being very white because that's the whole idea so this is the final result this is let me reset it this is the before photo that's the before photo and that's the final result with the double development and I think it makes a really cool photo it actually actually that photo um, ended up in my book on New York 
because uh, I really like this idea of that, having that boat and the haze all around that thing. And uh, and I, I did it a different way, the way I did it in the book, but now with this new dehaze option, it's really cool. Hope you like this trick. Uh, try this sort of double development, you know, with raw files and so smart objects in Photoshop. You can do a lot of things with it because you can, you know, just give two different looks to your raw files and then blend in with mask, you know, uh, because you, maybe the look you want to do just applies to the sky and just put that back in with a mask and, and layers and stuff. It's pretty cool. Voilà, mesdames et messieurs. I'll see you in another episode.